to see it. Anybody, do we miss any prayer needs? The folks come in, we needed to catch. How many other pockets did you get? <coughs> got several. We got a bunch. and got a few more coming too. Praise the Lord, He hears those needs. Praise the Lord for those who just tuned in. We love you. Pray God's blessings on you. Glad you're here, Christian life. We just pray you just worship with us. This is a good day to be in the house Amen. of the Lord. And our worship folks that are not already up here, <coughs> please come on up here. There. We're going to sing and make a melody to the Lord. We're going to be doing that tonight as well. But for us today, let's give Him glory. He deserves it. You are in the, you are in the house today to worship a God who deserves the best that we can give Him. So let's do that. Let's give Him our very best. Time we come into his presence and give him praise. Amen. Amen.
It's an old hymn. It's got three verses to it. If you've got a hymn book in front of you, if not, we've got an overhead. It's got, I think it's got every verse in it. Hallelujah. Mansion of the Hilltop.
He is worthy today. Just like the deer longs for water, may we long for our Lord today. Thank you, Lord. I did want to make a couple. We do have some. Brother, did you have a special day? Or? Well, I mean, Linda, Linda's going to be here first. I got to play it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. We'll invite Linda up in just a second. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let the kids go on back. I did have an announcement. Uh, we are going to have a meeting after church for VBS. And uh, by definition, that includes all the kids' workers that would be interested. So uh, I did, we probably did, I don't have a real good solution to this problem, but we did need some kids, to, the kids watched after when some folks are having the meeting. So uh, I do want to say this to the kids. I do, kids, don't come in here, okay, after church and play around hide and seek, okay? There's just too much equipment, either the nursery or outside or something, okay? So thank you so much. Thank you guys. And God bless you guys as you go back. Sister Linda, she's got a special for us. She was one of the Wednesday and an oversip on my part, but we're, we're glad she's here to do it today. God bless you, sister.
the Woody Chip special as well. That's awesome. God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Praise him this morning. Yes. It's an old song I started learning and sing uh, about 52 years ago, I guess. It's the first one I've actually done out in front of a church. It's an old song, and I hope you enjoy it. Aaron, if you go ahead and start that song, number three, track three. It's called In the Garden.
to worship <coughs> you and to show you our love and to return back what thou hast given us. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to bless this offering as we give from the heart and our tenth percent that it will be used to glorify the kingdom of heaven and not our own personal uses. Yes. For this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you as you give today. If you can, yeah, thank you. No. Already ahead of there. Thank you. So we have the, the uh, just a few things to make note of. I put up the ladies meeting, which would be the next schedule for it. I'm hearing awesome things about it, so just put that out there for us. As we already mentioned, we do have a VBS meeting after for those that are willing and able to stay to talk about our VBS coming up in July. It's July, I believe, around the 22nd or so, and we look forward to seeing the kids blessed. We talk about the kids today and well, he does good things in VBS. Uh, we mentioned about our fifth Sunday singing tonight. Brother Woody is our uh, point person. Please tell if you want to share a song or know somebody who does and think they can be here tonight, please let Brother Woody know he's getting together the schedule now. So let Brother Woody in on it. If you're out there, this is for you. Let us know that too. So we'd love to uh, have you be a, be a part with us uh, tonight in this fifth Sunday singing. We're having an awesome time. Give the glory to the Lord. Uh, next Sunday, our former pastor, Roy Walls, will be here. So we hope you can make it and be with us. Uh, he and Sister Lois are going to come down. And, uh, have a great time. Mention this, too, and this is for comment. This is not necessarily set in stone, but we put out a date for the folks uh, this week of June 11th for the holiday world trip that we do every year. And if that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, and you... You want to go, they are interested, and it's one way or the other. We do appreciate letting us know about that. Also, the church chairs, uh, we already mentioned about that. Looking at that soon, and as the Lord, as the Lord opens the door, appreciate all the input. And for our nursing home time, we're maybe looking to do something different, uh, change what we've done. For years and years, we, we've done it on Wednesday nights. Uh, and then with when the pandemic came, we had to stop. But we're looking to switch up some things. Um, and the input I'm getting back is we may try it and have a Sunday afternoon nursing home time now that's available to us. And so what that would be like, we would meet, we'd be able to normal morning service and then give time for people to get a bite to eat. And about 2.30, we'd head over to the Auburn nursing home and uh, sing and, and minister to them and there would not be a night service here. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. And again, if you have input on that and you're interested in participating in that ministry and have input, uh, it's a great ministry. God, has did it. God does good things with the senior folks there. They were very glad to see us. We were one of the first churches to come back since the pandemic, and so that makes things wide open, and we're maybe looking to do this. It will be every other month, and we will give you more of a schedule. But just if you have input on that, please let us know. That's what I'm leaning toward at this time. All right. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles today, we're going to be in the book of 2 Kings to start off with, 2 Kings chapter 5. This message today is called One Thing, One Thing. This, as to mention up front, this is maybe a little harder message. So if you're, um, you know, if you got a, sometimes a harder message is when I was a youth pastor, all the kids would be looking down. <laughs> and sometimes that's true with adults too. If you got to do that, that's okay. Because I, I, I realize something that a lot of times folks are listening when you, you know, you might think that they're not. But I, I, this is on my heart today, and just be with us here, and, and I'll, I'll share why in just a minute, because I, I don't want one thing to hold any of us back, amen? God has got good people in this church. Amen. This is a good church, but sometimes it's that one thing, you know what I'm talking about? It's that one thing, and you're, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we hope you will in just a moment, that one thing can hold us back. So I want to read this verse, and we'll, we'll discuss this here. So we're going to talk about, this is Memorial Day, so we're going to talk about a particular soldier. And this soldier, he had a lot of good things going for him, but he had that one thing that wasn't, wasn't what he needed to be. All right. And he, was from, he wasn't even from Israel. He was from a nation rather, rather far away. Syria was actually a rival to Israel. But let's read his story in this one verse here and talk a little bit more about it. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but a leper. 
but a leper. I'm going to pray and let's, let's go into this. Father, in the name of names, the name of Jesus, we are totally dependent on this word to go forward as it needs to. And Father, I just pray you, you bring it home to our hearts, dear God, that we won't hold anything back. But give this time and honor your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes we think, oh, I've got a lot of good things going for me. Uh, i got this and that. And oh, i got this thing over here, but uh, well, uh, it, there it is, and that's that. But I do want to remind us, one thing can be a very, very important thing. Right? So when I went up to, this is 2010, I went up to be ordained in, in a church up in northern Kentucky, a long drive, a little road trip for me. And I was excited, you know, I'm getting to be ordained and getting to spend some time with some other fellow Christians and believers. And I was excited, you know. This is up around Erlanger, Kentucky, if you've ever heard of that, way up there. And um, so I'm, I'm in the hotel room and kind of settling in. It's late at night, and I'm looking, and I, you know what had happened? I had packed everything so nice, but you know what I forgot? I had no changes of underwear. So <laughs> one thing can be an important thing. Late at night, when you find that out, there's not that. It matters. Amen? It matters. And so... Um, Maybe there's that one thing for us. The Lord is speaking to us that we need to do or change. And if we don't do or change it, it'll keep us from God's plan. Amen. And I don't want someone from my life, in the funeral maybe sometime down the road if the Lord doesn't come back first, I don't want someone to say, yeah, that Nathan, he was a, he was a good guy. But there was that one thing about him. There was that one thing. Now I don't want somebody in years to come down the road, they drive by this church. Maybe they're in flying cars by then if the Lord doesn't come back. I don't know. Whatever it is, they go by this church and they say, yeah, that was a good church there. But there was that one thing that held them back. And now they're not there. You know what I'm saying? That one thing can hold us back. And so what, what's going on here in this verse for me to say that here? If you look here in this story, Naaman is a great guy. He's got all this going for him. Um, he, he's a warrior. And like we said at the beginning, God has called us to be warriors too. And Naaman in his life, he had uh, a lot going that he was brave and victorious. The Bible says that God had given him victory. And this is a foreign, foreign dude. This isn't even somebody that, that knew exactly all of God's plan. But God had given great victory. He was brave. He was, the Bible says he was great. Everybody loved him and he was good. But he had that one thing. The Bible says he was a leper. And as you know, may or may not know, leprosy is, a, is a, an awful disease. It can eat away at your flesh, eat away your skin. It's a pretty big one thing that he had there, even though he had all these other things going for him. And so it's for, for today, on this weekend, I believe the Lord doesn't want us to give up and to settle and say, well, that one thing is just the one thing. But instead, I believe God has called us to victory today. Jesus is come and died on the cross so we might have victory. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, praise God, he gives us the victory through Christ Jesus the Lord. You are victorious today over those things through Christ Jesus. And so let's talk about some one things for us here. What are some one things that maybe can happen to us? Um, because people might see those deeds and talents and all the good stuff you got, but we know that one thing that's there. Maybe you're out there in whatever state, you need Jesus as Savior. Amen. You got a lot of good talents, you got a lot of good things, but you haven't given that one thing is you haven't given your life to Jesus. That's a fair that is the one thing. Amen. You need to give your life to Him today. You need to surrender it all to Him today. That may be what He's calling to do, because when you miss that one, you miss everything else. Today, that one thing is knowing Jesus. This is the good day for it. This is the good day for it. He died to change just that one messed up life. As some have put it, if it was just for me, he would have done it. Amen. That one life, that one thing. If you need Jesus today, can somebody say amen? It's a good day. Amen. It's a good day. I encourage us with this too. Um, even after we come to know Jesus, sometimes we let these one things be something that we hold on to, if you will. We haven't dealt with it. And the Bible does indeed call it sin. And they're those things we have to, to, to mention for us. Because that one thing can hold us back. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. So if you would look here. This is 
This is something that can, can bring it up when we want to mention it to us. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So we remind us God has a good plan for, for the sexual relations between a husband and a wife. And, and there's all kinds of other out there in the world. Can anybody say amen to that? Porn is everywhere. You turn on the internet, there it is. Relate, you know, there's all kinds of relationships. And a lot of times this comes up in the context of, of homosexuality. And that is definitely there. We believe that what the Bible says about that. We believe that God has it set up between a, a, a marriage for a man and a woman. We believe that. But this is not a day and a morning I encourage us to be looking at other people's one thing. We've got to look at ourselves. Amen. Amen. Look at where we are with that one thing. Because God has called us. If that's something that's an issue for us, He's called us to, to look at it. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. What about other one things? Because there's plenty of them out there. But the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, where some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I tell you what, that one thing could be the stuff for the money. We, we long for it. And we don't even realize that it's there, even as a Christian. But that that's kind of ends up our goal, to the neglect of God, to the neglect of our families. We have that love there, and we have to keep that in mind. Maybe it's fear. The Bible tells us he's not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Amen. And today, if that fear is that one thing that's holding you back and pulling you there, let's not have that. Let's not have that. And then Naaman in his situation, it's a pretty much a one thing too that could be for somebody. Because sometimes people, we need healing. Our bodies break down. We get sick. We have pains. We have issues. And so many times we can just give up and say, well, that's just the way it is. But as we sang this morning, nothing is too difficult for our God. Amen. Nothing is too difficult. If you need a touch in your body today, we are big believers that he is a healer. And so often he wants to heal. There are times he doesn't. We, we acknowledge that. But I believe more often than not, much of the time we just give up. And we don't want to do that. And we believe he is our healer today. And so, and I mentioned it for our church, for Christian Life Assembly. Maybe there's that one thing the Lord reveals to us that we've got to work on. And sometimes the Lord does reveal those things to me and to others. We've got to change something. We've got to work on it. And, and you might say to me, Nathan, you, know, I could, you point out several things, and maybe it's more than one thing you're, you're looking at. i got a bunch of things I need to do. Many times, God and His grace will deal with us about that one thing at a time. Amen? Sometimes <laughs> it would overwhelm us if He didn't. Somebody put it this way. It's like the top plate at a buffet. If anybody remembers the old buffet, it's not too many around. you got the top plate to pull off, and then there's others underneath. But you got to deal with that top plate first and grab that first, and then let the others bounce up and, and deal with them next. And so my point to us is this. If the Holy Spirit is dealing with you about your one thing, something we said or something we didn't say today, it's a good day. Just like Naaman, he had that one thing, and he was willing to deal with that. And we're going to talk about how he dealt with that in just a moment. But if, if it's just so painful today and you just feel like you've got to hide that, I just want to encourage us today, you don't have to hide. He is good today. When we can't fix our one thing, He can. Amen. He does. Amen. He does. I can testify Amen. to it today. Sometimes it's a journey. Sometimes it's maybe not like where we want it. Have faith. <laughs> have faith. Amen. Have faith that He can fix your one thing today, whatever it might be. Verses 2 and 3 in this story continuing on. And so Naaman had this one thing. He was a sick man. Verse 2, And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back to captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. So this is a servant or slave girl here in verse 3. And then she said to her mistress, If only my master were, were with the prophet who was in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. I'm thankful today for those people that God sends to help us. And it may come from unlikely sources. I'm thankful for that today. Listen to that help today. You might not always like to hear it, but oh Lord, help us to listen today. As he was told by a godly young girl who was just, he was, she was a slave, but she had that courage to stand up and say, hey, listen to what God can do for that leprosy. Listen to what our God can do with, through the prophet. We have faith. We have faith to listen. Thank God for our kids. We mentioned our kids today. Amen. Thank God for our kids. You know God can speak through kids. Yes, he can. God can speak through kids when we don't even like it. God can speak through people that we don't like. And I just encourage us. Let's not just necessarily 
Look at the things that, that we like, but maybe be willing to listen to those truths from wherever they might come from. I had, when I was a youth pastor, first starting off, um, so it wasn't a big group, but I had three girls that were pretty much always there. And they all, they didn't really like me, but they were always there at youth group. There was never a time that they weren't there. I, you, know, they, you, know, you ever had that? You know, it's like, maybe you couldn't miss a Sunday or two, and you're almost kind of saying, but they, they don't, they didn't miss. And so it was a struggle um, because they all—they didn't like anything I did. They didn't like me. And they, didn't, they didn't like. But anyway, so one time they, we, I was talking, and what I did when I got out of school is I took big notes. You know, some are taking notes to that. It's a good thing. But I would read my notes to them. They said, you know, Nathan, don't read your notes because that means that shows you you're not connected with us here. And I didn't like anything they had to say, right? Because they didn't like anything I had to say. You may have been there, but you know what? They were right. They were right, and I had to listen. I needed to minister to them, and sometimes you can't always just look at your notes, right? It is good. I took good notes, though. I took good notes, but you can't listen to them because you got to come down and sometimes speak from your heart. Does anybody see what I'm saying? And the Lord helped us work with the girls. It changed. It didn't, it, it didn't stay where it was with those girls. And it won't stay the way it was. It won't stay the same with our one thing if we listen. That's right. Amen. If we listen That's to right. what God is saying. Listen, right. he might speak to us through the Holy Spirit. Yes. He might speak to us through others. He may speak to us through the Word of God. You're Amen. reading along and you read that. It's like, ooh, I don't, I don't like that. That's my one thing. I don't like that. But if it's true, listen. Name and listen to him here. Because we're tempted to say, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. Right. But maybe, maybe, maybe we can put it through. Let's believe and trust if it is there that, it, that he will help us to listen. Verse 5. Because when we listen and act by faith and obey, that's my next point for us here, because we obey even when it seems strange. Verse 5, Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. In other words, he packed up for a big trip. He packed up to give gifts uh, if needed. We won't get into that part of the story. It's a good story. I encourage you to read all of it. But he, he was ready for the trip to go and do something about his one thing. Right? Sometimes we've got to do something. We've got to do something and step up. We can't just say, well, yeah, that, that is true. That needs to be dealt with. And then we don't do it. God has called us to obey and do this. And sometimes we've got to step outside our comfort zone. They had to go a few hundred miles. Let's, let's be willing to go the distance that God has called us to go, even when it's strange. Verses 10 and 11, continuing the story here. So he goes to the prophet. He goes to Elisha, the prophet. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan. Seven times Jordan is the river there flowing through. And your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. Verse 11. But, but Naaman became furious, the Bible says. He went away and said, indeed. I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Anybody ever been that way? God doesn't always operate the way we call us to do. So there's a listening and an obeying to us too. God doesn't always, in this case about healing, God doesn't always heal the same way. You know, God, sometimes there's oil. Sometimes you lay hands over a spot. Sometimes it's just like this. Really out there. My idea and point to us is we need to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Sensitive to His Word and obey what He says. And be willing to to let the Lord speak to us outside the box. And sometimes the plans of the Lord, they may seem strange, but we do it anyway. <clears throat> Dip in the water. And I, I put it one time like this in another message. Step out into the water. Amen? Yeah. Step out. What do you got to lose? Amen? Right. If you got that one thing, you've had that one thing a long time. There's just It seems like there's no hope. <clears throat> Step out into the water. Amen. See what your God, who made you, <clears throat> who loves you, can do with that one thing that would hold you Amen. back. Yeah. Step out. Step out. For us today, uh, I, I just remind us that when we do, and he did, Naaman was still willing to do it. He was still willing to do it. Uh, and when, when I've seen that, that work in my own thing, God has, has been good. The one thing I had for a while, as some of you all know, was I needed a wife. I was going to put it, put it blunt. I needed a wife. I needed somebody to be with uh, I had a, I mentioned I was a youth pastor, and then I struggled with jobs, and so I was looking around uh, for uh, other jobs, and eventually the Lord provided. And, um, and and during that time, at least some of that time, I was dating somebody that you may know. Her name is Mika, 
And Mika, you know, I wasn't really convinced that she was the one, right? And so I'm kind of looking here and there. Is she really the one? And, uh, you know, you kind of look here. Oh, I need a wife. And sometimes the Lord provides us solutions we may not like because, as you may know, Mika can be a feisty, feisty young lady here, right? <laughs> she can be pretty feisty with her. Very strong woman. I don't know about this woman, Lord. I think, I think we need to try again here. But you know what? The Lord has his ways. It may seem strange to us. Amen. You know, that dipping in the Jordan may seem strange to us. But I'm glad I did. I'm glad I married. I'm glad for that one thing. The Lord has an answer for me. He has an answer for you, too. Amen. If you're willing to obey, I'm thankful. I'm glad to be with her today. And I'm glad that he has an answer for all of whatever your thing is today. Verse 14. The Bible says this. So named he, named and went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Amen. Today, I thank the Lord that he has an answer for those things. The old soldier was made like a young boy. And for us who may feel like it's old, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? You can't do that. But I tell you what, I tell you what, that one thing that you think can't be taught any different, I'm thankful that he is still God. Amen. He is still God over that. Let's get out of the way of God. Step in. and He will heal us. He will deliver. If you need deliverance today, if you need to just let go and say, I've tried to deal with this for a long time, let's deal with it. Because God wants to make a miracle in us too. I'm thankful that we, it's not just the one things, but we serve the one. Amen. You and I serve one good God. One good God that we serve, He can heal our one thing. If that one thing is whatever it might be for us today, accepting Jesus, if that one thing is dealing with the anger, the money, the lust, all those things we mentioned, today the one, the only one is here. As Brother Woody and whoever would like to come today and minister with God, all things are possible. And for this church, if there's a one thing that is any way holding us back today, I'm thankful that we serve a God who brings a miracle. He's, we serve a God who shows us, and He doesn't just leave us and say, fix this. He's right there with us, Amen. holding our hands every step of the way. Today, I'm thankful that all things are possible with our God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. We believe it, believe it today. But we remind us, we don't have forever. Time is precious and important to us. If that one thing is there, the, the time is, can, can end up sometimes not on our side. It can drag us down. It can drag us down. But that's not God's plan. In Hebrews, he says, there's better things for you. Better things. And today, that's what we're saying for us. Do you believe it today? Amen. You're struggling with this. Step into the water is my encouragement to us today. Come Holy Spirit in this house. Could we just come to Him in the name of Jesus? Could you come to Him with your whole heart today? If you're watching this, if you're here in the building today, could you come to Him with your whole heart? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray if that one thing for someone is they need to get saved, they need to give their lives to You, Lord. If they need to make it right, there is nothing else that matters. Lord, if, we can be, have all the good things and have all the good that people see like Naaman, but there's that one thing. If we need to make it right today, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, that through the Holy Spirit, you will show them that they believe and confess with their mouths, Jesus is Lord, and you're raised from the dead and will be saved. Today, I pray that for each one that needs it. If there's anybody out there, Father God, who needs a healing. Like Naaman, you're struggling in your body. The pain has been there maybe for a while. I had the privilege of seeing God work in a meeting I was in just recently. Long-term pain. He healed. Father, do it. Do it in lives today. Father, I just pray that for any that are sick physically, maybe the COVID or the flu or the whatever it might be, you're the healer, dear God. That doesn't have to drag them down, dear God. But instead, they can be lifted up. I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that, Lord, do give that healing, dear God, for those that need it through the stripes of Calvary, 
through the cross. And Father God, I pray for that one other thing. Maybe there's something else in, in others' lives. It could be so much different in each one that only you, dear God, can show them through the Spirit. Show them what they need to do, how to make it right, Lord. Show them how to make it right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Today, Father God, let nothing hold us back from you and your loving arms and the peace of knowing you, dear God, and then the power in knowing you, dear God, that we can help somebody else and see ourselves how they let nothing hold us back. I pray that for each one in the sound of my voice today. Let nothing hold us back. Father, for those watching out there, dear God, may they not give up. May they know you love them, dear God. Even when they fall, maybe that one thing causes them to trip up from time to time. Lord, I just pray that you let them know you haven't stopped loving them. Let them know that they just, maybe they're just ready to throw in the towel. But let them know you haven't given up on them. That you're speaking and calling to their hearts today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Touch them, each one, with that one thing. By your grace and your peace and love in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. For those watching out there, we love you. And we're here. Love to hear from you. If you watched us today, if you have a need, that one thing is something you need to take to somebody else. Message us, let us know where you're God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Christian.